Hi there, and welcome to the show. I'm Robin Chakra, and you find me today in London. Never let it be said that we don't travel. Uh, last month, you may remember, if you've been watching this channel, uh, we interviewed Ian Burrell, the world ambassador for West Indian rum, and he was such an amazing fellow to interview, we thought we'd follow it up and come to his rum fest in London. And that is where we are now. I'm being passed on all sides by amazing people in wild dress, um, and it's an incredible atmosphere, it's absolutely wonderful fun. We're going to go and interview a series of rum makers and hopefully learn a lot about the, how rum is made and where. Follow me. Stephen, it's lovely to see you, and it's kind of you to give us a little bit of your time in this very busy no, no show. Problem, no problem. How's it going? You yeah, going really show? well, really well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's busy, uh, but it's a good busy, yeah. um, and everyone's kind of Almost seems to be getting involved and really getting to grips with what we're doing. So yeah, good. It's just amazing what the atmosphere is like. I, it's most enjoyable, I must say. Now tell me a little bit about oh, Woods yeah, yeah, Rum, because yeah, 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 I know nothing yeah, of it. So yeah, absolutely. Me. So Woods is actually a very old brand. It's been around since 1887. Um, but what we've done this year is we're taking a decision to kind of rejuvenate the brand and, and uh, kind of bring it back to life a little. Bit. Um, one of the things for us is the liquid quality was always it was always there. It was never an issue. What we had a problem with was was the kind of previous marketing and branding uh, didn't necessarily scream out um, the quality of the liquid that we were looking for. Uh, in terms of the rum itself, it's made in Guyana in South America uh, at a diamond distillery. Uh, it's a blend of three different rums. Two of them are from continuous copper column stills, and then one is from um, the only remaining single wooden pot still in the world. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's called the Versailles still at the Diamond Distillery. Um, and yeah, so basically the rum is made distilled there, shipped over to the UK. Uh, it's aged in the UK, blended in the UK, uh, bottled and then sold in the UK. Um, so in 1887, originally it was shipped into Liverpool. Nowadays, the only difference is it's now shipped into Glasgow. Uh, other than that, we keep everything the same. And this explains your accent. It explains the accent, yeah. And they probably hired me because I look like the chap on the bottle. <laughs> now, so the, so the name of Woods Rum is actually named after is still itself. So is that no, 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 no. So that's actually just a coincidence. Oh, right. So it's named after a company called the Woods Trading Company, right. who were a company based in Liverpool in 1887. Yes. So they had trading ships coming in from all over the world, and on board some of these ships were barrels of rum. Yeah. Now they basically seized an opportunity and set up a trade agreement with Guyana uh, to import these three different marks of rum, and then therefore kind of created Woods Navy Rum. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Now it, it seems, does seem to me that the rum industry is poised on a very good place right now. It seems Absolutely. that it's expanding the gin thing is maybe a little bit waning and yeah well I mean obviously the gin thing is is, is has become huge uh, there seems to be a new gin coming out almost every other day uh, but rum is rums in a good place I would say things like this with rum fest and other rum festivals around the UK really help to grow the understanding of rum the thing with rum for me is it is such a diverse uh, category right away from white golden spice dark navy rum all the way up it's so complicated for someone to understand the whole category that that's what people get a little bit confused with. Uh, and things like this really help. And when the education of rum grows, rum as a category is going to grow. I think it's very exciting times. Stephen, I'm very grateful to you. Thank you very Pleasure. much for talking to me. Pleasure. And uh, we'll no doubt see you a little later on. Excellent. Take care. Thank Thanks very much. Alex, extremely good of you to talk to us. It's nice to give us your time in this busy, uh, busy show. How's it going, the show? Absolutely fantastic. We're here at the 10-year anniversary of the Rumfest. Uh, I myself have been here for nine years. Have you really used yeah. it almost everywhere? S supporting and been here. I visited for the first year, but ended up working for the last nine. And it's my favourite time of year. It's my. It's, it's more important than Christmas Day to me, really. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's absolutely fantastic. The atmosphere is amazing, and it's it's wonderful to be here. Absolutely. Now, tell me a little bit about Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rican rum, because I know little about it. 
So Puerto Rico is obviously an island at the top of the island arch in the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, it's 100 miles long, 37 miles wide. Um, it's sort of Atlantic Ocean to the north. It's a very wet weather and dry heat from the Caribbean Sea in the south. So it forms a perfect microclimate in the middle of the island where we have one of the largest rainforests. It's called the El Yunque Rainforest. Um, one of the largest in the US and the Caribbean territory. So Don Q Rum itself um, is the national rum of Puerto Rico. We've been making rum for 151 years in Ponce, which is the most southern city in Puerto Rico. Right. The Familia Sarayas are a family-owned company, uh, one of the largest rum producers in the Caribbean. And of course, Don Q, named after Don Quixote, the uh, famous prolific Spanish novel. And that's the, the, the name the family decided to name the brand after in terms of right. the book notates chivalry and doing things honestly and correctly. So we don't add any sugars to our rum. It's all about aging and blending and yeah. doing things in a natural Spanish way. Fantastic. Now, I mean, you, you said it's a family company. Is it, is it, do you do your own distribution as well? I mean, is it an entirely family run operation? Absolutely. On the island of Puerto Rico itself, we're yeah. in control of everything from um, distillation, bottling, blending, aging, and we are one of the largest uh, distributors of alcohol on the island of Puerto Rico. Right. And we have a separate distribution company in the US. Yes, right, you, yes that you need. And presumably, so where in the UK do you, uh, do you, do you market your so we work exclusively with some of the best restaurant groups, of D&D Group and the Galvin Restaurant Trains, and right. um, working with the best rum bars in the UK, Trailer Happiness and Mahikis and all So it's largely into the on-trade, so you've got no, the no trade, yeah, no. The, the yeah. Gran Anya, however, here is available through special cavists and uh, alcohol stores up and down the UK, but yeah, we've only been distributed for about just over a year in the UK. So it's quite new if, if this market for you. Very new to the market, yeah, Very we're exciting. available all over Europe and we just opened Asia and expanding outside of the US, so US-wise, we account for, Puerto Rico accounts for around 65 to 75% of all the rum consumed in America. Really? So, yeah, a very large company. I have no idea. <laughs> I see. So you're, you're expecting to grow very substantially in this country. Like Absolutely, it's yeah. We've had amazing feedback. And, you know, we do things in a very specific way, as I mentioned. No sugar added to our rums at all. It's all about yeah. the aging and the careful blending process yes. of creating this rum. So we are a very, very that different is, style. That is the excitement about rum, is that it, it is a process that actually has to be controlled with after. It's where it doesn't just simply come out of the end of a still and vlog it the next day. I can, I can understand that that's a very exciting. I was, I've been trying to get the imp impression and impression of just how much rum is poised to take over from the gin industry as being the sort of leading spirit in the market. And I, I get a feeling that that may not be too far away. Not at all. I mean, I've been in the last three years, rum has grown exponentially. I mean, we're up to sort of like six to eight percent growing every year worldwide. Right. So a lot, a lot more people are moving away from whiskey and moving away from gin. Yeah. You know, it's a, they've kind of entered into the spirits world from that, yeah. and moving on to rum and understanding what it's all about and understanding the difference between the Jamaican style rums, heavy pot still, and your you know, Puerto Rican light dry styles or relaxed sipping Bayesian style rums. There's just such a plethora of different like a different palettes, like like a painting almost, a different styles of rum. So it has the choice. The question, I suppose, is whether that choice is so complicated that people are going to get put off. But anyway, I, I'm looking forward to the next few years. I'm sure that this kind of event is going to make a massive difference. Absolutely. It's you been like, a should, pleasure talking to you. Should we drink some rum? Well, I, I will certainly like to drink some Let's rum. I think that's a very good idea. So what we'll do here is we'll start with the Don Q 2005, just right. the closest bottle to you there. So this yeah. is our newest expression we've launched um, in the US this year. Right. So it's our first and only expression of an unblended rum. So it comes straight off our copper column still and into, t into barrels for 10 years, ex-bourbon barrels. And what you're going to find on the nose is a considerable amount of the creme brulee oh, right. and yes. caramelized it's creme brulee, caramel. caramelized yeah. bananas, a little subtle anise. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, on the palate, some chewy and light and crisp. Remember, remember no sugar added whatsoever. Right. So that careful process of aging in the crisp. So the, all the flavour comes out of the wood. About the, and you say old bourbon barrels. Next bourbon barrels yeah. we use. Yeah, we use them on the, on the twice twice used. We right. use on the third char, try. We don't rechar. Right. We like to keep those the, the resins in the barrel. So it's all about the saccharification and the yeah. interaction yeah. Um, with those barrels. It's a complex business. The market in bar old barrels is extraordinary. Absolutely. Moment. Cheers. Very nice. To Enjoy. To your health. See you. Enjoy. I'm going to have to be very careful because I'm going all the way around the show. <laughs> so that's a great treat for me. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you for being here. We'll see you again. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Jolene, it's very good of you to give up your time in this busy show to, to talk to us. It's kind of you. Welcome to Rumfest 2016. And it's very exciting. We're having a lovely time here. Excellent. Are you enjoying it? Is it going well? Uh, this is our 10th Rumfest now. Oh, you started right at the beginning. We started right at the beginning when Rumfest was uh, a smaller affair over at the Royal Agricultural Hall uh, right. over in Pimlico, Victoria. Yeah. And we've seen Rumfresh grow throughout the years until what it is here today. Yeah, and, and it isn't it fantastic. It's got it to be fantastic, a bit. Yeah. And I think it's going along with the reputation of the rum itself as well, which is very interesting because it's gaining in popularity all the time. Correct. Um, there's Traditionally, rum has always been seen as a, a, a slightly more mature person's drink. <laughs> but we've seen, um, we've seen rum evolve over the years and it's reaching out to the younger market now. Yeah, and cocktails perhaps helped with that and it was all that. Correct, um, it all started uh, nearly around about six or seven years ago now with the explosion of the mojitos, uh, the caprinias, and that's when people became aware of uh, cane based spirits yeah. a lot more in the UK. I see. Right, well now tell me about the Mauritian rum business because I know nothing. <laughs> We are, we are the original proponents of uh, Mauritian rum. We started bringing over Mauritian rum 12, 10, 12 years ago now. Right. Um, at first, uh, the distilleries themselves uh, was a bit reluctant. They weren't really sure of what the export market was like, but we've proved that there's, uh, there's enough rum, uh, there's enough uh, desire and demand for, for rum from all over the world, especially within the UK, that it can be made a success of. That's extremely interesting. So the, the producers themselves were concerned what, about no, overproduction? It's not really or? that they weren't concerned, it's that export wasn't their primary focus. No. But when we came along, they suddenly realized that, yeah, there's a lot of potential outside of the domestic market for us, to, for them to exploit. Yes, I see. Uh, tell me something about how a distillery can grow. I mean, if, you, if a distillery starts with a, a couple of pot stills, yes. you're talking a thousand liters a day maximum. Yeah. Um, how do they grow then? It's all about demand and creating brand awareness. Right. So if you was to start a, your own distillery tomorrow, you would, in essence, hook up with someone uh, like Green Island Drinks. Yes. Our expertise is to not to sell the product, but to create an education for the product. So we will go into the bars, the clubs for, for the brand, yeah. we will promote the brand, we will come to shows like this, we will show the consumers what the brand is all about, how it tastes, the processes, and generally create awareness of the product. Yeah, I see. Well, that's all absolutely fascinating, and I wish you the very best of luck with this. You have a wonderful range here. I mean, and if, is it all of Mauritian? Is all of Mauritian? We, we are a, a big supporter of Mauritian rum. Yeah. Um, we carry other drinks as well, like cachaça, uh, uh, tequila, but we are known as the Mauritian rum people. Yes, yeah, I see. And UK, you say, is, is a great market. Is that true of Europe in general, or is this just just England? And there's there's tastes vary throughout Europe. Germany is another big market for us. Scandinavia is also doing quite well for us as well. France has always been traditionally a, 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 a rum drinker, but they prefer their uh, their rums from their own territories, like right. uh, Dominique uh, and stuff like that. That's understandable. Um, but in the UK, it really, if, if you're talking about Europe, the UK really has a, a, a huge and excellent demand for rum. Yeah. Well, long may it continue. I agree. Thank you very much. And Mr. Chai, it's been a great pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very, you very much for talking to us. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to come back a little later on when I no longer have to sound sober. You're more and come welcome. and try a rum. You're welcome. Too. Very nice to see you. Okay. Find us on our website on the Cotswold Explorer.co.uk, on Twitter at Cotswold Explore. Obviously find us on Facebook and anywhere else and remember to subscribe to our channel.